Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indisciplined Mind podcast for Saturday, April 23rd, 2016. As of this morning, Sierra's still missing. Uh, so, what I've been thinking about, and what I thought I'd kind of talk about today, is... It's a solar system I'm thinking up for my space opera. So the name of the the name of the kingdom, and I think it'll be the name of the solar system, is is like Imaduri. It's Japanese. I've decided I'm gonna use a lot of Japanese names, and that's gonna be the old tongue, if you will. And so I, I've got in my mind an image of the solar system where this empire is, where this emperor has been dethroned. And so, obviously, we got a sun. Makes sense. It's kind of the standard. (laughs) Start with the sun. And then there's going to be a number of planets. Uh, I want to have several. I haven't decided how many, because I'm not sure... You know, everything I'm going to say here is, is prefaced by the fact that I need to do research and see how likely these things are to happen or if they're even freaking possible. But I would like it to have a relatively large Goldilocks zone. And the Goldilocks zone, if you're not familiar with that term, is the band, the area... Um, away from the sun, the range at which planets can sustain life as we know it. And so I'd like to have, well, I definitely know I want to have at least two planets in the Goldilocks sun, and that's because the primary planet, which is the seat of government, which is where uh, these people come from, I haven't decided if I'm going to give them some alien features or not, or if they're just going to be like some humans that got dropped off there ages ago, or what. Thus far, I'm kind of thinking of them as humans, but I was I was also toying with maybe giving them different physiology. i got to think more on that. But I want to have... So you get the main planet. I want to have that planet be part of a binary pair. That's how I think of it. I don't know if that's the right terminology. And so what I mean by that is... You've got the sun, and you've got a planet on one side, and you have a planet on the other side, and they're in the same orbit, but they never see each other, because the sun's in the middle, in the way, all the time. So they wouldn't have known that uh, that, that other planet existed until they became spacefaring. Um, that could be an interesting story, maybe like a side story, where you know, the first astronauts go up, and they're they're flying somewhere. Maybe they, you know, they, they go to go to one of the outer planets and they come back and they land on the wrong planet. <laughs> uh, Twenty ideas, but um, so you can have these binary planets, and they're both gonna be habitable. I haven't decided if on the second planet of the pair, if uh, they're going to be uh, any life forms on there, at, or not. I haven't decided that. So we got that, We're, and then I would like to have, I would like to have a couple more planets, if possible, you know, kind of to give it a sense of a larger empire. And then we're going to have the outer, outside of the range of the planets. There's not going to be a lot of outer planets outside of the Goldilocks zone, I don't think, um, because I want to keep the distances kind of close from a travel perspective. That's the another thing I want to work out. I don't. They're not going to have faster than light travel, but I want them to have some method of travel that is fast enough that it's not taking years of their lives to get from one place to the other. Uh, So i got to work that out. I I do have one methodology in in my mind that I'm going to talk about. So out in this, you know, outer darkness, if you will, there are a series of space stations set out there that are that are unassociated with the Empire. So they're kind of, you know, the most isolates of, of the 
Hills area. They have a name, the, the collection has a name that means homeless. I forget the Japanese word for that, but that's okay. And what I kind of really want is I don't I want uh, an outer rim feeling. I don't want to use the term outer rim. And what I was my, what my initial thought was is to have like this big array, uh, a, a big asteroid belt between between the inner planets and, and these these space stations of the homeless. But what I want to do is with this asteroid belt is I want it to be going completely around the solar system, like in a ragged sphere kind of thing. I don't know if that's possible. I'm kind of guessing by the fact that, you know, planets have rings and, you know, these types of things tend to flatten out pretty much. You know, even our asteroid belt is fairly... You know, flat compared to the you know total three-dimensional space if you will of the solar system that I'm expecting that that's probably not possible um, so I gotta look into that you know I would kind of like to do that but then at the same time that that gives me a problem because I, I have this idea for a way to do relatively high speed travel between the inner systems and the outer systems and that is through the use of some kind of a I'll, I'll call a ship all right some kind of a ship that is basically you know if you've ever seen a, a, a spiral graph when you were a kid where you're drawing lines and it's kind of going into the center and out to the edge, but it's working its way around a larger circle and it's looping and it's looping and it's looping. I envision a ship whose path is like that. It never stops. And so it, it's over time, it's been able to build up speeds that are, you know, a, a sizable percentage or a percentage at least, really even a percentage of one would be good. Uh, a percentage of, uh, say, light speed, okay? So it's, it's really fast. It's nowhere near FTL, but it's really fast. And then so I, I kind of envision it as, as, you know, as you get near your destination, a shuttle's going to peel off of this thing that's, in essence, you know, pretty much just, you know, 10 seats in an engine big engine and it's it has it has two jobs number one slow you down when you get off and number two get you up to some sort of speed where you can catch up to it now it's not going to be able to there's going to be some sort of a there would need to be some sort of technology where this ship can kind of like grab you you know i don't know if it's going to be like a tractor beam or something more physical but something where the ship can get up to like a minimum speed and then this thing is going to grab it, grab that, that, that shuttle and reel it in. And then you take it into the system. You know, I, you know, one of the things is I see this as part of this outlaw pirate kind of, um, uh, settlement that's out there. This is their thing. So why the military doesn't take it out might just be that, you know, A, maybe they do sometimes, and uh, B, maybe it's just going too fast to really be able to, to try to get it. And you maybe, maybe there's some reason why it's deemed not a, a, a target to be worth hitting, perhaps. So, so that's kind of like fast transport out to the out to the out to the rim but you know having this sphere of asteroids all around the system is going to be a problem with that because this thing is going to have to continually be going in and out of that asteroid belt if that's the case so i i, I don't know maybe i i i want to do something there you know maybe 
I don't know. You know, the whole planet inside a, a nebula thing has been done. I, I would kind of like there to be, you know, I, I, I like the feeling of asteroids just because... Just because it's like, well, you know, we can't really... You know, they, they would imagine their view of the night sky if they were totally surrounded by asteroids. It would be so random and unpredictable. They wouldn't be able to, you know, they wouldn't really be able to, to discern like we can. We have, you know, know very well our night sky. We've mapped it out for centuries. But because they'd always be asteroids blocking different stars at different times, it would be impossible. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do about that. Yeah, I, I I need to find out a lot of things here. I need to I need to find out if the whole binary planet thing is possible. I need to get a sense of okay, how big can a Goldilocks zone be? Um, like in in our case, I think our Goldilocks zone, Goldilocks zone, Goldilocks zone, ah, our our Goldilocks zone only encompasses Earth, maybe Mars. So yeah, I got I, I I have a lot of things that I'm thinking about that I need to I need to research. I need to do some research. So um, with the course I have right now, I haven't had the time to do it, but I I have been thinking about this solar system in odd moments, and um, thought I'd share that. If you have any grand ideas for this little slice of heaven, I call Imaduri. I think that's what it was. Uh, do let me know. But I guess I will let that be that for today. I will be back on Monday. I'll be talking to you then. So, be seeing you.